I'll be determined to listen to Dhamma. Today is the sixth day of this meditation retreat. And coming on a retreat is when you build your meditation object, making the mind peaceful. You put down your work duties, responsibilities, put down all the various communication devices and you bring up mindfulness with the body, with speech, with the mind. And this is building our barami, our spiritual accumulations. And this barami is something, is a merit that we have done in the past. Upe kata punyata is merit that has been done in the past. And this merit will bring us happiness. So we have to develop it. So now we are practicing meditation, listening to Dhamma, doing chanting, giving alms, practicing dana, generosity. So this is all the merit and goodness that we're doing in this life. And we have practiced that yesterday, the day before, last month, last year, and even in past lives. So if we've contemplated that this isn't the first time that we're doing and practicing building our barami, making merit like this, even in past lives, we've done it before. So it's not just this one life. And so this life, then we come back again to build our goodness, our merit, our barami. Uh, we are building goodness through developing sila, the precepts, samadhi, concentration and wisdom, or practicing or the practice of generosity, morality and meditation, bhavana. And uh, if our barami is full, then we will receive the results coming from that in this very life. Uh, so we have to put in effort to build our good karma and uh, to practice meditation, practice dhamma is a lot of good karma that we are doing. And so some may have the question that I've been practicing for many years already. How come I haven't yet seen the dhamma? We have to see how much barami that we have made in the past. Is it a little or is it a lot? We can take an example or a simile of a cup of water. If this water is just one tenth full, uh, then it is another nine more parts until it becomes completely full. And that is like one can then see the Dhamma when it's full. So we must keep filling this cup up. We develop and practice merit, practice, develop goodness, and our meditation, we have to be intent to develop this until our mindfulness improves, our samadhi becomes firmly concentrated, and our wisdom is uh, better and higher. And this is like then we're pouring more water into this cup. Uh, instead of nine parts left, then we have eight or seven left. Uh, we, we're increasing the water from one to two to three to four to five parts like that. Or some maybe have even filled it all the way till nine parts. But maybe they don't yet see the Dhamma in that life and they die before that. And because of the merit and goodness they've made, uh, the results of that is they're born into a higher realm. Uh, and then later, they come to be uh, reborn in the human realm again. In the beginning, they may be deluded. But when they meet with suffering, then they want to find the path leading out of suffering to be liberated from it. And they already have built uh, nine-tenths of their parami or the cup is that full. And so then in this life, they just need to build one more part until it's completely full, and then they see the Dhamma. So some, it's uh, nine parts or even more, that it's just one more drop and the cup is full. Then they can just listen to the Dhamma, contemplate the Dhamma, and they can see the Dhamma. 
uh, because at that time their minds have firmly established samadhi. Uh, they're able to maintain that while they're listening to Dhamma. Their minds are focused and concentrated on that Dhamma so they can then see Dhamma very easily and it's able to change over their views. Uh, to see the Dhamma is to change one's views. Right now, we see things according to self. We believe that there is uh, this abiding self. Everything is seen from a self. It truly exists. But the Buddha said that things are impermanent. Uh, but we don't see it that way. We see things as nichang, which is permanent. And so we attach to things. And then when those things change according to nature, then we have to suffer uh, because of that because we haven't yet accepted the truth. So we need to change our views. We change them to accept the truth of impermanence, uh, the truth of not-self. And then if we can change our views like that, then uh, that's someone who's fully, um, full of, uh, completely full of gilesas or mental defilements. And they, because they've changed their views, they can reduce the defilements in their heart uh, by, say, 25%. Uh, and so this is someone who has barami and who has inner, inner wealth. And can give an example in relation to this is like one person is born as a human being and they're in that life they have uh, a great amount of wealth. They're a millionaire or, or more billionaire and they have... Uh, a lot of precious gold and they decide to hide it away in their house. They have a stone or brick house. So they hide away the gold in the walls. Um, and then from that life, they die as a human being um, from the merit they've made. They're born in a heaven realm and they cycle around birth and death like that. Then they come to be reborn again and they're born somewhere else. Uh, but then they come back to this house and the the owner there um, is selling that house, and they this uh, person then really likes the house. It's in a very good place. There's trees. There's nature around. It's very peaceful there. So they go buy that house, and then they live in there. And one day, um, a stone uh, falls from the wall, and they look inside, and they can find uh, all that gold again, uh, the precious gold inside there. And then in that life, then they're a, a very wealthy uh, person again. So this is like uh, one's merit that one has done before because someone has built it in the past, then one will receive it uh, in the future. So this is uh, a simile for the inner wealth that we've built, that we've developed our barami. Um, it will lead to merit uh, results in the future. People may contemplate of why Venerable Sivali uh, could attain to the, the Dhamma so quickly, become enlightened so quickly. Just when he had his hair shaved off, uh, the first part of hair falling down and he could attain to Sotopana, the next part and he could attain to Sakadagami, Anagami and then Arahantship already just in that uh, one shaving of his hair. This is because he had built his barami a lot already in past lives. And so uh, we may ask then, if we then try to sincerely practice in this life, we will be able to see the Dhamma. Uh, we will be able to, because the Dhamma can arise at any time. It's not dependent on time and place. Uh, that is, if we have developed sila, or we have kept, maintained good sila, we have a firmly concentrated mind in samadhi, and wisdom has arisen, then we can know and see the Dhamma. In the beginning, it may be difficult to build and uh, develop samadhi, but lay people can do it as well if they're determined. They sit meditation. If you can do uh, two hours a day, or if you have more time, then you can do three hours a day. You try to develop a lot of mindfulness through the day, and 
uh, be intent to listen and contemplate into Dhamma, and keeping the five precepts, the eight precepts, and practicing uh, meditation without fail. Then the mind gets uh, more firmly concentrated in samadhi, and then one can see uh, something a con of conventional reality. And uh, before we had been deluded in it as being a self, as being me and mine, but we listen to the Dhamma, and then our minds are very focused, and the minds have peace. And then we can see that same thing that was of uh, conventions. We see it uh, for what it really is, that it's simply uh, elements of nature coming together. Mm. And then we can understand, just like a ch we have names. Uh, this is a child. This is an adult. Their names uh, in conventional reality or we call this a monk, this one's a samaneri, a bhikkhuni. Uh, these are names or conventions that we put on uh, things that have come together from elements from nature. Just like we name this Mahayana and we name it Theravada, they're simply just labels and conventions. If we see all things as being empty, then the mind is able to see uh, that through that, those conventions, it sees into emptiness. And so we may do our chants of these verses of Dhamma, but we shouldn't just chant with our mouth. We should also reflect, let our mind contemplate along with the chanting as well. And we do this every day. Every day we chant until the mind can become peaceful. And then that knowing and understanding arises into that all things are inherently empty. When our faculties, uh, the training of sila, samadhi, panya has gathered together, they're complete, then we're able to see the Dhamma. So we uh, are intent to listen to Dhamma, to learn, to practice Dhamma. Then we will have a chance to see the Dhamma. That is, uh, when our parami is full, we will see the Dhamma. And this applies also to someone who is doubting about the practice still. In the beginning, I had uh, doubts about the practice as well. But then uh, after practicing and understanding, then uh, those doubts were naturally uh, abandoned. Mm. So this is something that you can attain to in this life, uh, just be determined and it requires sincere effort in the practice. Just like in the world, we're able to succeed. We wanted to get a bachelor's degree, master's or a doctorate or succeed in our work. We were able to do it. We could succeed. And in Dhamma practice, it's the same as well. We can do it. It's not beyond our ability. In this life, we must be determined. And if we keep practicing without stopping, then we will attain to it. Just like uh, Venerable Ajahn Chah said that underneath the ground, there's definitely water. We go dig looking for water. If we keep digging without stopping, then we'll definitely find water. Uh, these days, they may dig for natural resources and they're underground, maybe they have to dig 10 kilometers deep down um, and then they can find oil or gas. Uh, just like that, they have to keep digging until they find that resource. Uh, so human beings are able to use their intellect uh, in this way in order to gain resources and to succeed. And so in Dhamma practice is the same if we're able to be determined, sincere, and practice without stopping, then we will see the Dhamma. Uh, or at the least, we will have built our Bharami to be higher and better so that it becomes a cause that one day we do see the Dhamma. We can, uh, we may contemplate. Uh, about Venerable Sivali and question of why he was able to attain so quickly to Sotapanna Sakadagami Anagami Arahantship. 
why is it that some of those in the Buddha's time were able to attain uh, upon in that life, in that very life, listening to that talk? Um, this is because they had built their barami in the past. Um, and one who has barami, then even if they aren't interested in Dhamma, uh, they can be brought and attain Dhamma quickly, just like the uh, son of Anattapinika, the wealthy merchant in the time of the Buddha, who wasn't interested in Dhamma at all. Mm. He was born very wealthy and he didn't want to go listen to the teachings of the Buddha because he didn't want to abandon his enjoyments, indulging and um, his satisfaction in all the wealth. Uh, he just wanted to enjoy every day. But Anattapindika was very wise. And so Anattapindika had a method that he uh, would pay the son to go listen to the Dhamma, the teachings of the Buddha. Uh, and he told the son to go listen to the Dhamma and just to remember one verse and go back to tell his father. And so the son who didn't really want to listen to the Dhamma sat at the very back. Uh, but the Buddha gave a teaching that really entered deep down into his heart and he was able to see the Dhamma. And so he went when he went back, he didn't want the money because what he had gotten was much more valuable than any money could have bought. Uh, so may you be determined in your practice and may you all see the Dhamma. <laughs>